Elden Ring has many mysteries, and naturally, players may have some misconceptions about its characters. Did you know that the cool Valkyrie from the trailer is actually just a straight up garbage person? What about how your waifu might actually be evil? Or why did your parents get divorced? Was it your fault? Well, I'm going to answer those questions and more in this video. The main event that the story of Elden Ring revolves around is that of the Shattering. Queen Marika destroyed the Elden Ring, which plunged the lands between into the chaos that you find it in. The Elden Ring shattered into many great runes. Marika's children then fought amongst themselves in order to collect these great runes and hopefully become her successor. Of course, it didn't really work out this way. Queen Marika herself only gained her power through the help of an outer god known as the Greater Will. Not much is known about the outer gods, but they are distinct entities. To understand why Marika shattered the Elden Ring, we have to go back to the time of the first Elden Lord. Godfrey was the first Elden Lord. He is such a badass. He reminds me of Red from Angry Birds. Godfrey just kicked the absolute crap out of the giants when they went to war. Like you see all these corpses just sitting there? Marika effectively married him and made him the first Elden Lord because of how hench he is. Now you might hear this and think that maybe Godfrey is a simp who only beat up the giants so he could get a mythical Bioware fade to black bang cutscene. However, his real name is actually Horalu and he used to be a real rugged mountain man type. Marika only married him in order to get him to help fight the giants. It's not exactly said why they went to war with the giants, but it can be assumed that it was because of the god that the giants worship, or because Marika just really hates gingers for some reason. You can see the deity on the one-eyed shield and also on the giant's body. The description of the shield states that it is believed the deity was slain by Marika, so it can be assumed that maybe Marika wanted to kill any deity that could oppose her reign, and despite succeeding, she also failed. It appears that the deity somehow survived on the fire giant we end up fighting. We cannot really say if all the giants just have a massive ass face on their body, or if only this giant does due to being possessed by or connected to the deity in some manner. As punishment for being bad at winning wars, Marika sentenced the fire giant to tend over the flame. This act makes you wonder if that maybe she was aware she failed to kill the deity. After this war with the giants, at some point, Godfrey faced the Storm Lord by himself. The Storm Lord is most likely Dragon Lord Placidus. It's worth mentioning that Storm Lord is the equivalent of an Elden Lord, but for a different outer god. The description of his armor reads, The age of the Erdtree began amongst conflict. When Godfrey was Lord of the battlefield, he led the war against the giants, faced the Storm Lord alone, and then there came a moment when his last worthy enemy fell, and it was then, as the story is told, that the hue of Lord Godfrey's eyes faded. How badass is that? Now you see why I compare him to Red from Angry Birds, right? However, now that he had conquered everything, the light fading from his eyes signified him being robbed of his grace and becoming the first tarnished. Godfrey left the lands between with his people and was no longer the Elden Lord. So what happened between Marika and Godfrey? Did they get a divorce? Maybe it became an open relationship. To me, it seems like it became more of a I don't want to play with you anymore moment. Like in Toy Story, when Andy and Woody have their divorce, Marika didn't really have a use for Godfrey now that the giants were gone. At the end of crumbling Faru Mazula, you fight the beast clergyman, who is actually Malekef, the Black Blade. The placement of this character as one of the final bosses might seem out of left field, but Malekef actually has an important place in the story. In order to ensure the immortality of the gods, Marika took the rune of death out of the Elden Ring and entrusted it to Malekef, who would guard over it. Unfortunately, even though Malekef is kind of hench, he actually sucks at guarding runes of death. He also sucks at returning his neighbor's lawn mower. On the night of the Black Knives, the Black Knife assassins successfully stole the Rune of Death from him. This made him really sad because he failed Marika. However, he did not display the same sadness when his neighbor asked if he could have his lawnmower back. He just kept coming up with cute excuses like how apparently the Black Knife assassins also stole it. Like, shut up Malekef, I can literally hear you use my damn lawnmower at 6am on a Saturday morning. When you fight Malekef, his sword is imbued with the Rune of Death, which you can easily observe when he kills you. He doesn't actually kill you dead though, you just respawn. This implies that you are actually beyond death itself. You are, to put it simply, built different. This is canon. It's in the lore. An interesting aspect of Malekef's character that you might not pick up on is that he is actually Garank. If you give Garank all of the death fruit that he asks for, he will recognize you when you find him in Crumbling Faru Mazula. Tarnished. Why would so? 
It's kind of hard to say exactly when this fight takes place, though crumbling Furum Azula seems to potentially exist outside of time. After the Rune of Death was used to kill Godwin, it spread throughout the lands between his death route, which is why he wants you to collect it for him. Personally, I think that this version of Malekith is explicitly from the future, as it seems he has used the death route to recreate the Rune of Death, which is the whole reason why you beat his ass. There is a massive inconsistency here though. Why would he ask you to get him death route when he could just use his neighbor's damn lawnmower that he still hasn't returned. I mean, what the f*** Malekith? So what exactly did the Black Knife Assassins do with the Rune of Death that they stole from Malekith? If you played through Elden Ring doing all of the optional content you came across, you probably found Rani at some point. Most people when they meet her immediately buy a body pillow. To put a long story short, she has a massive questline that you can follow where you become best friends and do friend stuff like steal cars and light them on fire. It is very long and in involved but the details of it are not required for you to understand the overall story of Elden Ring, so I'm going to do a separate video on it. To put it simply though, I feel like most players who complete the quest will feel like Rani is probably the good guy, kind of like the plants in Plants vs Zombies. However, it turns out she is more zombie than plant, in the literal sense because she is undead, but also in the bad guy sense because she is a bad guy. Rani is responsible for orchestrating the death of Godwin the Golden through stealing the Rune of Death. She is the one who sent the Black Knife assassins to steal it from Malekith. The reason Rani did this is because she doesn't like the two fingers and basically wanted them to shove it. Rani is an Empyrean just like Marika, which means that she is eligible to succeed Marika as the Giga Chad hench goddess. This would of course make her the avatar of the two fingers and the greater will that they represent. So she found a loophole. She used the rune of death to kill her physical Empyrean body while still allowing her soul to live on. However, in order to allow her soul to live on, she would need to kill another soul in its place. So she picked Godwin and got her black knife assassins to kill his soul, which left his body behind. You can actually find his soulless body below Stormvale and also in a certain room late into the game. But like Rani's questline, his questline is not entirely relevant to the main storyline of Elden Ring and it would take a separate video to discuss properly. So if you're interested in that, you can subscribe to my channel. This conflict presumably led to Marika shattering the Elden Ring because two of her children kind of died, but not really. But yes, actually, this means that Rani could be considered responsible for everything that has happened in the lands between since that night. So next time you're browsing fan art of Rani, maybe keep in mind that she is not necessarily a plant or a zombie. She is Crazy Dave. Praetor Rikard was similar to Rani in that he he also held a dislike for the Two Fingers and the Greater Will. After the Shattering, he rebelled against the Greater Will and didn't seek to collect all of the Great Runes. This is why his followers at Volcano Manor actively work against Tarnished who are trying to become Elden Lord. He was even aware of Rani's scheme before she put it into motion. The description of the Blasphemous Claw states, On the night of the dire plot, Rani rewarded Praetor Rikard with these traces. Should the coming trespass one day transpire, they would serve as a last resort foil, allowing Rikard to challenge Malekith the Black Blade, the Black Beast of Destined Death. However, we know that Rikard never had to use the Blasphemous Claw, because if he did, Malekith's neighbor would have gotten his goddamn lawnmower returned to him. Rikard instead gave the Blasphemous Claw to Banal. Eventually, Rikard intentionally let himself get eaten by a giant snake, which then made him and the snake basically merge together into one being. It is hard to tell if it is some Alzabo type shit and the snake just absorbed him, or if they actually merged together and Rikard Rikard is still alive. However, it is safe to assume that Rikard has some weird ass fetishes. Speaking of weird ass fetishes, When you find Renala, she appears to be quite weak. She just kind of floats around until you beat her up a bunch. And then her daughter Rani intervenes and summons a ghost version of Renala at her prime, which you then fight. You don't actually kill the real Renala, which is why she's still alive and just sitting on her ass after the fight. This begs the question, what happened to Renala? She used to be so strong and able to stand on her own two feet, but now she just sits there and floats around as if she is depressed. In order to find out what happened to Renala, first we have to answer 
answer the question, what is divorce? Well, divorce is when mummy and daddy live in separate houses and you get double the presents. However, this is Elden Ring, so it's a bit more complicated than that. Renala was married to Radagon and their children were Rikard, Radan, and Rani. Eventually, Radagon and Renala had a divorce, so Radagon could go and bang Marika and become the new Elden Lord. This is where it gets really weird. It turns out that Marika and Radagon are actually the same person. You can see this in the intro cutscene of the final boss fight where Marika kind of transforms into Radagon. Funnily enough, this was revealed in the very first thing the game shows you. All the way back in the intro, you are actually shown Marika causing the shattering and then it cuts to Radagon in the exact same pose, trying to repair the Elden Ring. Marika shattering the Elden Ring was done in rebellion against the Greater Will, while her Radagon half was actually more sympathetic to the Greater Will, so he tried to repair it. Somehow, Radagon and Marika gave birth to Melania and Mikula. Compare the pair. Same age, same income, same super contribution. Yet, there could be a lifetime of difference despite being the same person. Now it makes a lot more sense as to why Renala is found in the state that she is in. The love of her life divorced her, turned out to be Marika, and then performed a mythical bang cutscene upon himself to reproduce. That is some tragic lore. Prepare to cry. Now we don't know the exact terms of the divorce, but we can guess at one of them. Renala obviously got the dog. She doesn't even take care of it. It literally just runs around the academy, disrupting students and professors. Can you imagine trying to book a room at your university and you get told that your professor is literally letting her massive wolf expel bodily waste all over it because she is depressed or something? At any normal university, you would get fired for that. Not the wolf bit, but the depression bit. You would get fired for struggling with terrible mental health issues. In Elden Ring though, Renala is at the very top of the academy pyramid. There is no one to fire her. So instead, all of the underlings just locked her in the library at the top and they basically just run the academy themselves. It would suck though if you needed to borrow a copy of the Very Hungry Caterpillar and had to deal with whatever this is. Bruh. I'm sure some people would like the controversial foot nipple scene though. Godric the Grafted is a distant descendant of Godfrey. If Godfrey was red from Angry Birds, then Godric is the garbage whip you make in Bad Piggies. Godric is an absolute joke. The other characters cyber bully him. Honestly, Godric's nothing more than a jumped up country bumpkin. Lord, oh, don't make me laugh. The reason he does all this grafting is because it is his way of desperately attaining power. He is that weak. The only reason Morgoth guards him is to stop Strong Tarnished from getting very far in their journey. Nobody likes Godric. That is basically the entire lore behind him. He just sucks. You saw that first Elden Ring trailer, right? Where the cool Valkyrie walks up to the big evil fat guy. I imagine you thought, wow, I can't wait to watch Varney Vidge's tragic prepare to cry video on that Valkyrie. She will be just like Artorias. Well, it turns out you're going to watch my prepare to beat ass video on that Valkyrie because she is absolutely awful. She is Melania, blade of Mikula. Mikula is her twin. They were both cursed when they were born. Mikula was cursed to be a child forever. He's uh, like a little boss baby like a little man while melania was hit with that dollar store scarlet rock curse wow this sounds like some prepare to cry tier lore right you are probably thinking poor melania and her curse she probably struggled with it but eventually overcame it to become an honorable warrior wrong melania used her curse to be a straight up asshole if you beat melania and trade her remembrance for an incantation you will get scarlet aeonia the description for scarlet aeonia says each time the scarlet flower blooms melania's rot advantage Answers. It has bloomed twice already. With the third bloom, she will become a true goddess. The Scarlet Flower has bloomed outside of her boss room and also in Kaelid. During the boss fight with Melania, when she enters her second phase, she blooms for the third time. The second phase of her fight is her as this rot goddess. Of course, she is no match for the Mimic tier. Kind of pathetic, isn't it? When she used the Scarlet Bloom in Kaelid, this is what spread the Scarlet Rot over the region. What was she even doing in Kaelid though? It's simple. She was going to war with Radan, the evil warlord. Only that's not correct. Radan is actually an absolute chad. When he was younger, he absolutely loved his horse. But as he grew older, he grew in power. His horse was quite weak in comparison to him. Soon he was way too hench for the horse to carry him. So what did he do? Radan learned advanced gravity magic that would help his horse hold his weight so he could continue to ride with his beloved steed. How cute. Aww. 
Did you know that he is using the same advanced gravity magic to hold back the stars in the sky? The very same stars that are actually powerful alien beasts. Rodan seems like the kind of guy you could just get a beer with down at the pub. Now why in the lands between would anyone want to fight such a lovable fella? Melania was invading Rodan's territory in order to take his great rune. She was the aggressor in this fight. There was an awful battle which eventually concluded when Melania used her Scarlet Bloom. Why did she use it though? Her boss fight is really hard right? Harder than Radan's fight. She is obviously stronger than him, right? Well, actually no. Radan is just a really cool guy, and Melania was no trouble for him. So in desperation, because she is just a genuinely awful person, she activated her Scarlet Bloom, which infested the entire region with Scarlet Rot, killing countless people. It also drove Radan insane, and is the reason why you see him eating corpses of friend and foe alike. It is also why his boss fight is easier than Melania's fight. You are fighting him after he has been driven insane by the Scarlet Rot. At his peak power level, his boss fight would have involved you going on a fishing trip off the beautiful Kaelid beaches. You would throw the fish back once you caught them, because Radan wouldn't have wanted to disrupt the local ecosystem. The fight would have ended in a picnic on the beach. What a nice time that would have been. It's a shame Melania had to ruin it. Now because both Radan and Melania have Scarlet Rot, if you have ever banged either of them, you should consult with your doctor, as you might have contracted the Scarlet Rot STI. You do not want Scarlet rod on your privates. Now what exactly was Melania's twin Mikola up to while she was busy genociding? Honestly what Moog does to Mikola is quite messed up so I'm not going to joke about it. Ah, much better. Moog kidnapped Mikola while Melania Blade of Mikola was out styling on Radan. Moog is kind of obsessed with Mikola. He took Mikola to his bloody bedchamber and tried to share it with him. Keep in mind Mikola looks like this. So, uh, Mikola's a bit smaller than Moog. His plan was to use Mikola to usher in the Moogwin dynasty. He wanted to make Mikola take the place of Marika by raising him to godhood. Moog would then become Mikola's consort and as a result, an elder lord. In response to this proposition, Mikola just died instantly. We don't actually know for certain if Mikola died. I think it's safe to assume that Mikola yeeted their mind out of their body or something like that. Mikola could also potentially show up in a future DLC for Elden Ring. It seems that inside of the cocoon, his body could have been growing into that of a god's. So to summarize the story of Elden Ring in its entirety, Godfrey is red from Angry Birds. Marika threw a tantrum because her kids died, but not really. But yes, actually, Melania is rude. Radan is actually just a normal happy-go-lucky guy trying to make it in the big city. Rani is Crazy Dave. Godric the Grafted is embarrassing. Moog is a whole situation. Mikola is the boss baby. Rikard is really weird. Renala is depressed. And finally, Malekith is a big ass mother who still hasn't returned my fucking lawnmower goddamn piece of So how exactly does all of this story appear in the journey that you, the player, undertake? Well basically, after Marika shattered the Elden Ring, each of the big bosses you can fight obtain a rune from it. You need to get the runes in order to repair the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. When you eventually reach the Erd Tree, you are blocked from entering it and you should travel to the land of the giants in order to get the flame the fire giant guards. After that, you travel to crumbling Faru Missoula. Here you get the lawnmower of death from Malekith so you can mow down the Erd Tree. Then you fight Godfrey, Radagon and the Elden Beast, which appears to be a manifestation of the greater will. After that, you finally become Elden Lord. So I guess none of this is deep, dark, prepare to cry lore actually affects you that much. Now it goes without saying that Elden Ring doesn't have the most straightforward way of telling its story. I have tried my best to tell its story without any errors, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if I made some incorrect assumptions. So feel free to leave any of your theories or corrections in the comments. I also did not cover all of the ending quest lines in this video, along with a whole host of NPC storylines. This is because I intend on doing more videos for each of them as they can be quite complex and I would have struggled to fit them in this video. So if you are interested in seeing those videos, you should subscribe to my channel. It would look great on your resume.